So good morning and good afternoon to my Tanzanian buddies. Um, thank you all for coming. Everybody who's on here, I have um, met all of you or at least spoken to you. Um, so you know who I am. I'm Carrie Holschbach with Food for His Children. But for anyone who's watching this later on, um, I'm the founder and executive director with Food for His Children. And we are a ministry in Tanzania and we seek to serve people who are working with less than a dollar a day to help them get out of extreme poverty um, by giving them a hand. Um, walking alongside them, not doing things for them, but doing things with them and equipping and empowering them so that they can become all that God created them to be. Today is Tea Time with Tanzania, and this um, Tea Time, we are going to be showcasing some of the families that we work with and the craft that they do. Um, some of them, we had one person who is a welder and he makes pots, but he had um, something he had to go and do. So we've got um, We've got someone else is going to show us how to make bricks. Um, Samson is with our brick maker, Will Brody. And we've got Frank, who's with um, Julian, who is a solar technician. Um, and he's going to tell us some of the things that he does. And I'm going to show you a video about Pendaley and Thomas. Um, Pendaley and Thomas live in Endeshangwit, which has very poor network. Um, internet service. So we've got a video instead to show you to make sure that you could actually see and hear things and hopefully it works better than last month's video attempt. <laughs> I gave it another try. Um, so we're going to start with Penaley's video and then we will um, switch over to Samson after that who is with Will Brody. So um, and also want to remind you that um, we do have technical difficulties on occasion, so just have grace and peace and pray if there are internet difficulties, especially with Tanzania, just if um, things happen, then just stop and pray. So this is, you should all be able to see my screen in a second here, and this is a video about Penaley and Thomas. At that time, they had 11 people living in their mud and stick home, including their children and other relatives. Today, they have 14, including their eight children and Pendalee's brother's four children, as he cannot provide for them due to a mental illness. When Thomas and Pendalee started with food for his children, they relied on income from their small farm and a restaurant, which was a space just big enough for a few seats and a cooking pot. They struggled to provide for their children, to pay for school fees, supplies, and uniforms. They dreamt of expanding their business and of paying for secondary school for their children. After starting with Food for His Children, Thomas and Pendley were trained in agriculture and livestock keeping. They learned how to build a goat shed, about zero grazing, how to feed goats, spraying goats for parasites, and how to preserve their feed. In the Food for His Children's Paravet training program, Pendley learned goat first aid, how to cast how to properly deworm goats. Along with their husband, both learned how to use contour farming to preserve water and to plant ground cover plants that are drought resistant, as getting water in the dry season poses a significant challenge, which can include a 12 kilometer walk round trip. Thomas and Pentley used their skills they learned in the entrepreneurship training to build their business, save money, and join a savings group. In this group, they can pool their funds with others, take loans out for school tuition or capital for growing or starting a business. They started by saving $1 per week to add capital to their business. Having milk from their goat provided much needed nutrition for their children and cut back on money they used to spend on food. This allowed them to save even more money to expand their restaurant and open new businesses. Caring for 12 children is a full-time job in itself but Pendley made it a priority to lead her peers in the Food for His Children site in her village for over 10 years. After the program grew, her site was splitting into two groups. She was voted to be the leader and has been re-elected every term. As a leader, she advises new Food for His Children members to put into practice all they learned from Food for His Children training as it will benefit their family and communities. Pendley said, to be a leader is something very tough because as a leader, you may face a lot of challenges from people you lead. I insist on collaboration with the newly elected committee members and project leader to make sure our project is moving forward and we can overcome all the challenges. 
Today, Thomas and Penderley have a small store, a restaurant, a TV shop where people pay to watch soccer matches and charge their cell phones. By selling their goats, they are able to pay school fees so their children can continue their education. Once all the children are through secondary school, they will buy materials to build a brick home. With 12 children to support, it's always a struggle to get ahead, but together they have a strong spirit and are committed to moving forward to bless their family, giving them a brighter future. Thomas and Pendley have completed 14 of the 15 points of a healthy home, further demonstrating their drive to become all they were created to be and to be a good role model for their children and their peers in food for his children. Your gifts to Food for His Children are not just benefiting individual families, but blessing entire communities as people like Pendley and Thomas are able to provide for their children's education, start locally owned businesses in rural villages, and to lead others to do the same. So that is Pendley's story. Um, I. I have been blessed to meet with her most of the time when I'm in Tanzania uh, because she is one of the site leaders, um, which is also always awesome for me. I love to do kind of a longitudinal study so that I can see some of the, I can't with every family, but some of the families so I can see the progression from when I first met them in 2009 until where they are today. Um, so that I can see the, the different changes that have been made. And just a couple um, notes about some of those changes too. So the families that we work with, um, you won't see changes super quickly um, because going from less than a dollar a day to um, even three or five dollars a day is not a fast change. Um, it's a slow progression, but some of the things that they're able to do when they receive the goat, it saves them money because they, they have milk from the goats. So it saves them money that they used to spend for food adds nutrition for their family without them having to spend that money. They can then save that money to use it for capital for other things or to buy other food or other needs for their family. Um, and then, then they can sell the goats to pay for school fees or pay for capital for businesses. And so that's how they've been able to slowly make some changes with their family. But as you can see, they, they still, they would like to build a brick house. They don't have that yet but they've got 12 children that they are trying to um, support and send through school and try to provide all of those needs for them. Um, and they are starting um, building all these businesses as well. So um, any of us, if, if we had 12 children, <laughs> life would be a struggle for, for quite a while until those 12 children are um, grown adults. So um, the progression is slow, but it is moving. And um, the life transformation, um, which is not a material progression, but an amazing progression in and of itself is a beautiful thing to see too. So um, that is Pendeli and Thomas, and I see Samson on our screen. Samson, can you unmute yourself and you can tell us about Will Brody and he can show us what he does. Hello, my name is Samson Ismail. So today I'm here at Floma. Floma is one among the project sites of Food for Children. So today I visited my friend called Willie Brody Daniel. Willie Brody Daniel. Uh, Willie Brody Daniel is one among the project recipients at, at, at Floma. He's making the burning bricks and selling them in order to get the money for his family. So he's always appreciating the trainings that we have been providing, uh, uh, training like entrepreneurship and the livestock trainings, also environment, health environment trainings that we have, we have been providing. He wants to show you how he can make through the So as you see, he just mix the, the soil with water. Then he has that one, Samson? that box. Hello? Um, your video has stopped, I think, because your um, internet signal is a little lower. So um, I don't know if you can move to a slightly different area where you said, there we go. Now we can see you. Okay, 
So the, the one you see is Willy Prodi Daniel. That is how he make the bricks. So he, make, he mix the, brick, the soil with water. Then uh, he has a box where he puts the, the mud. So this is how he make the bricks. And how many bricks can he make in a day? So this is how he makes. Uh, he, he can make uh, 400 bricks in a day, but that is when wow. he has a, someone to support. As you see, that, this is just a demonstration, yeah. So this is just a demonstration, yeah. So he can make even 400 bricks. And then how much do they sell the bricks for, Samson? Uh, it's, 100 and, it's 150 shillings. Okay. And so for... So um, you see this is a... Uh, yeah. So for the um, Americans... Yeah, you see this is a brick... Sorry, Samson. For the Americans, um, there's yes. about 2,200 shilling per dollar. So 100 shilling... It's maybe 20 cents or so. Go ahead, Samson. <laughs> Very small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a brick kiln that has 10,000 bricks. And it has took like four months for him to, com to complete making this due to the uh, four months because he has to collect the soil. Also, he has to collect the the trees log for for bricks to be burned. So this is, as you see, it has a 10,000 bricks. So when he's going to sell this, he's he gonna get like 1.5 million. So Samson, is he, is he gonna sell all the bricks in that? Yes. That whole thing he's going to sell? or he's making the bricks inside of it? He's making, also he's selling the bricks. Okay. Yeah. How would someone transport so that? So, sorry? How would somebody transport all those bricks? Uh, in order to make that cling like this? Yeah. Wow, they have to be like three or four. So, yeah, they just they just making the brick here here at 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 home. So it's very easy for them to to create the things like this, like this. So they're creating this in order uh, to be burned. As you see, uh, there is this hole. Yeah. As you see, the, this is the hole where they put over here, so you run the... And how long do they leave the bricks inside of there to burn, to cook? Sorry? How long do they have to cook the bricks? This is where we pray, you guys. Will you probably how long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's come again. Two months, right? It's four days. It takes four days to burn the bricks. Okay. And then where does he get all of the dirt? Yeah. Sorry? Where does he get all of the soil? Where they get the soil, uh, there are people who have uh, 
they just dig this they dig this soil so they 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 they, buy, they they there are people who are selling this soil so they go in there they buy the soil and they and then they, and then they transport from the people who are selling to, to home place so that they they're making the soil so all, this soil is is just uh, in you can get it uh, from people who are selling from the some people in their land they have the the kind of this soil so they are they selling them okay and Samson, how many bricks, can you ask Will Brody, how many bricks it takes for a small house? A small house, like uh, how many rooms? Because it depends with the rooms too. <laughs> Let's say a house uh, big enough for a family of six or eight people. Will Brody, come at so the the house with uh, five rooms can can take seven thousand bricks. Okay. So I'm gonna do yeah. yeah. Another thing that you, you okay. No, go ahead, Samson. Yeah, another thing. That Willy Brody is practicing is, uh, as you see, he plants uh, banana trees, and this is, he 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 just starting doing this after he received the training from Earth and Environment. So we're training them about uh, how to have the trees. So he just planting these banana trees, and this is the result of the trainings that we have been providing. The bricks that he, he, he made entrepreneurship training that we have been providing to them. So yeah, he really appreciating that. Very good. So he's selling bananas and he's selling bricks. And I just did a little calculation. Did you, in case my memory's wrong, Samson, yeah. did you say it's 100 shilling for a brick? 150. 150. Okay. So that would be about $450 to build a, a five room house just for the bricks, then. That's not bad, Americans. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Samson, does, um, does Will Brody have anything? That he, else that he wants to share? Will you bring us to show them what you want to talk about? What she did, Kisha? Yes. Chote, I'm going to talk about it. Voice, please. In our group of Nipa, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to get in a funny issue. The Shilpiana and the Okay, so he said I uh, really appreciate the the trainings that we have been providing to them. He uh, he also uh, he think he he's also appreciate uh, Levina the site. Uh, leader because he has been she has been visiting her, him and uh, advising him many times so uh, he's really appreciating the training that we have been providing also the field officer the is nothing is nothing to for 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 the training that we have been providing. Samson, is Will Brody a um, paravet? Yeah, no, uh, uh, we, he's not a paravet. Okay. He's not a paravet. But we propose, yeah, we proposed him to be a paravet because he has joined with the project in 2018. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, um, I remember at a meeting that, um, I'm trying to find my notes and I'll try and keep doing that while you guys are talking, but 
um, he had said something. He said something that really, really impressed me. I remember his name, um, and I remember meeting him. But so I remember he was. Yeah. Um, he's one of our fat people, and so um, fat is somebody who is faithful, somebody who is accountable, somebody who is uh, can be a trainer, and someone who is willing to teach others. And so those are the people that we are looking for, so that they can share what they learned from us, and then share it with with their neighbors, so that. The, the information that they get can just keep spreading throughout their community. And I remember Will Brody being one of those people when I met him. So thank you very much, Samson. And thank you, Will Brody. It's good to see you. So Samson, we are going to switch over to Frank. Okay. And Frank, are okay, you thank ready? Thank you very much. Thank you, Samson. Yeah, I'm ready. Hi, everyone. Good morning to American friends and to African Tanzania. It is evening. I can say good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for getting this uh, bright opportunity to represent one among the family from Chem Chem Project site. Today, I'm with Julian, one among the Food for His Children beneficiaries and recipients. Uh, Julian joined the project in 2018. Uh, him and her wife, they have successed a lot of things when they joined the projects. But today I would like to share with you a little bit uh, uh, innovation that Julian always do. Julian is a, I can say he's an electricity engineer in a local village or in a rural area of Chemchem district. Today I would like to show you how Julian performs his skills and share his skills to his people and train some of youth in this area to know how to build a, a solar system in their houses and to get a, a, a good energy for cooking, uh, also for studying for their children and also for lightning in their houses. I would like to take a moment to see how the system of solar system works. Uh, Julian has a solar panel, a small solar panel here. We will give a sample. Let me turn my camera. I would like to move slowly. Uh, this is a small solar system, a small solar panel, which is connected to the side where uh, a whole night, a whole day, will get a good and enough uh, sun. So you can produce energy from the sun and generate it to battery. So the battery will save the energy to be used for the whole night. In the morning to, till the evening, used to generate power from the solar. As you see, this is a wire for pipe for, 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 for generating, for harvesting uh, energy from the sun directly through the solar. And this is battery. This is a phone, mobile phone battery, and this is a, a power bank. The power bank. It's we know that power bank. It's reach a time power bank won't able to work any longer. But the system will be changed and use the battery inside the power bank to generate the to produce energy enough. Lighting for the whole day. So, Frank, this... Frank, I'm gonna um just interpret for a moment because your uh, internet is a little low. So he um, generated a, a power from the sources here, as you see. This is a small bit. Okay. Can you repeat yeah. how how yes, long you... how long does that battery keep on? How long will it provide power? I'm listening, Kerry. Did you hear me? Uh, we missed a part of what you said. So, how long will that 
that uh, solar bank, how long will it provide power? So he said when after harvesting uh, uh, sun rays direct from the solar to the battery, when the battery is strong enough, has an ability to store a power for more than eight hours. When you light in from 7 a.m. 7 p.m. at night till 9 p.m. in the midnight. So it does when battery is strong, you will be able to receive a power for more than eight to nine hours. Okay, that's good. Even of ability to get energy for the whole night. Uh, system of power, can you light? Wash up. As you can see, it's off. When you light, you get uh, energy. And this energy was harvested directly from the sun through solar panel and then stored it to the battery for the phone battery and the, the uh, power bank and which generates power to the light, to the bulb light. So for the whole night, they are able to get a good energy for their house and for the security around their houses for the whole night when the battery has enough power to store energy inside. So we see in the middle of the we want to go out from home, we will see to the spread, we can be connected from steam, a small, small bit, right, a connected the single object, for it, and you see a touch of a new, from the enough energy, so his name added from the country. Frank, we're not getting all the so words. I guess this is a, a country. This So that sounded like a lot of Swahili to me. I don't know if the rest of you cut. <laughs> it wasn't Swahili. That was internet language. He said then Swahili could do what this this one He don't fail the 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 piece of. You're, I don't know so, if you can hear me, Frank, but your you internet is not good enough for us to understand you. So we're just going to watch what he's doing and how he's connecting things. Um, 
one thing that's important to know that um, that they didn't mention is that in Tanzania, um, unlike here where it's getting dark at three in the afternoon, um, it is light until six in Tanzania. But if you don't have electricity, having darkness starting at 6 p.m. Um, and trying to do the things that you need to do, trying kids trying to do homework and different things like that, um, not having any electricity is definitely a challenge. Um, the government in Tanzania has made some significant challenges or changes in the last five years. They have run, um, the goal is that the entire country will have electricity um, within the next couple of years and they have run power lines to many of the rural areas. So there will be access to electricity, um, but this has been a game changer for a lot of people. Frank, your your internet, your signal was pretty low. So a lot of what you said, um, we just couldn't, couldn't understand what you were saying, but that's okay. We saw what you were doing. So I see you've got another light in your hand. You wanna tell me about that one? We'll see if we can understand what you're saying now. Yeah, maybe I can start. Is internet clear, I hope. I can just try to demonstrate a little bit. This is a system of electricity at the house. So as you see here, this is power bank. The power bank used to store uh, power. So it can be used for the whole night for the lightning. As you see, after connecting the power bank direct from the solar, the solar has recharged the power bank. And the power bank now is used as a battery for storing the charge so it can be used for the whole night. As you see, it's lightning here. This is a bulb for power, for light at the, for the night. So at the night, when he wants to go out of his family, he just used to disconnect one battery from the system and to form a small, a small light or as torch, where through this phone battery, he can travel a very long distance, even outside of his family. Maybe if he wants to go to toilet at the night, because we know that we are using outside toilets, he can go to toilet. Maybe he wants to go to God's shed to see the if the gods are safe. He can use this small torch as you see here. This is movable and he can, it's... He said that through this phone battery, the, it has an ability to keep charge for, for light for the whole night, more than 12 hours. So this he used this as a torch when he wants to go everywhere for the night, maybe in a state of emergence, maybe he wants to go to see his uh, around his campus for security purpose because he is a father. So when he moving at the night, this doesn't affect the, 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 the energy system of his house because he left the house with the light through this another enough power for the generating light to the house. So this remained to his house uh, and the, still the house is in the light and he himself he have enough energy to move outside of his house. So he, he used these skills as part of, yeah, of innovation and earning, sometimes earning profit. Okay. Thank you, Frank. And thank you, thank Julian. You, it's nice to see you. Please uh, say hello to Christina for me. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Andy. Asante. Asante. Mungu wa kabariki. Asante. <laughs> So uh, now we're going to move over to Christian, who is going to talk a little bit um, about some of the skills that people that we work with um, learn and gain through working with Food for His Children. And then Upendo, who is our teacher and training coordinator, is going to um, share a little bit after Christian. So Christian, are you set? Yeah, sure. So hi everyone, this is Christian and I'm working with Food for His Children as a communications person. And today I would like to share with you brief about uh, the skills and classes taught by Food for His Children. But, but before going uh, there, I would like to give you brief about how Food for His Children is working with different departments inside. Um, Food for His Children has more than five active departments and we have health and environment, 
We have faith department. We have agriculture and animal husbandry department. We also have uh, entrepreneurship and economic development department, and we have our communications department. So um, today I would like to talk more about entrepreneurship and economic development department. As food for a scene, we've been struggling and working very hard to create and finding the opportunities uh, for the families that we are working with. And uh, for the last nine years of working with rural families here in Tanzania, we have developed the huge, uh, I mean, um, we have developed um, a wide range of skills and, and ideas on how we can empower these families. A lot of our families can't even afford to, to buy food, clothes, send their children to school, and even paying for their medical bills. But our belief is, uh, with the help of our uh, entrepreneurship department and a food for children, we can help the families to uh, start, develop, and manage businesses. And where is, and there is where they can get money and provide for their family. Food for children is working with families who are willing to start their financial journey with food for children and um, to help them to see the possibilities in life and become all God created them to be. Uh, food for children uh, decided to go for entrepreneurship because uh, it's about the ability for the families to improve their, the, the standard of their living. And that is what we are looking for. So um, Food for Syrian is not staying with these families for the rest of their lives. So our belief is to see one day after the membership of this, with, with these families, uh, the families will be able to address their challenges and be able to uh, provide for their families and solve their financial problems. So um, our expectation is to see families are able to to access all basic needs, uh, like send their children to school, uh, buy school items, uh, food, build the house, and enjoy the life like everybody around the world. So um, the entrepreneurship and economic development department um, is providing basic trainings and skills on about entrepreneurship. It's all about creating awareness about entrepreneurship to the families that we are working with. We also are creating small groups of people uh, from 10 to 30 members and um, they come together, we share, I mean, um, coming together and start saving. Uh, they also, um, we also help them to register those, uh, we help them with registration of those groups and this is after they uh, created the bylaws and regulations that will lead the group. And um, currently uh, we have almost eight strong saving groups in the areas that food processing is working. And um, these groups have been uh, uh, conducting their monthly meetings. And this is with the help of case managers and field officers. Um, they're also using different tools like saving tracker where uh, they can keep their data and, and the information about, about the groups. So now I would like also to give you a brief about the skills and, and the uh, classes that food processing is uh, teaching these families. We are providing, uh, as I said before, we are giving uh, knowledge about entrepreneurship and all concepts related to entrepreneurship, advantages and how families can be uh, great entrepreneurs. And this is in theory form. We're also providing practical trainings and we are teaching families how to make handmade products like soaps and, and other things. And we are, we are you know, um, Food for Syria is located in Karatu a place with uh, a large number of tourist destinations. So we are using this as an opportunity uh, for these uh, uh, families to uh, to sell their handmade products to, to the people who are just coming to Tanzania and maybe visiting national parks. And we, um, we have received a lot of testimonies from the families, how their lives have been impacted uh, with the help of saving groups. Uh, the, the families have been able to send their children to school um, paying for the medical bills, building the house, and achieve their long-term, long-term dreams. So, food for children is teaching families to be creative and to map their resources and use those resources for the betterment of their lives. And being able to see, uh, to have the eyes to see things that is beyond the expectations. You know, our families are surrounded by several resources, but problem is how they can utilize. So, food for children is there to work alongside these families and help them to. To, to use those uh, resources so that they can be able to provide for their families and enjoy their life like everybody around the world. And this is all about uh, what we are doing. Thank you, Christian. And uh, Pendo, are you ready? 
Yes, I'm ready, Carrie. Thank you, dear. Um, okay. Um, in addition to what Christian has said, as you know that we, we empower the rural communities through the knowledge that we provide, whereby we teach the families um, on different issues. Um, as I said that in addition to what Christian said, we provide entrepreneurship skills, but we also provide um, them with health and environment skills, whereby we believe that when a person is good um, in health-wise, will be able to do other stuff and work properly. But when he's unstable, in terms of healthy, it will be very difficult for him or to provide for the family or for him or herself. But also provide the skills on leadership, whereby we, we, we believe that everybody is, any person is a leader. So starting with he or him, or he or, or she, she can stand on himself or herself as a leader, leading herself and leading others, but also provide skills on farming foundations and techniques on how to do well in agriculture and also animal husbandry. As we know that we food for his children, we provide God. So as we provide those skills on um, animal husbandry, um, that will be able to help the um, people to know how to handle the God when the when they they have them but and why we provide education for them or the knowledge we know that uh, through knowledge or through the education that we provide people will be able to utilize them and use the gifts that God provided them with but also um, through the knowledge that they got uh, people, they can be able to make decisions for themselves because we know that when the person is free um, in terms of knowledge, will be able to utilize the knowledge that he or she has got to, to, pro to provide for themselves or to use them in different areas. But also we know that um, he or she will be able to, to, be stable, uh, to be stable to help others because we know that through education, um, love is strengthened because people will be able to share the knowledge that they have with others because we know that you can teach one person and that uh, that person can teach others. So through that love is shared, people they can learn um, different uh, issues from other people. As I said before that uh, through the knowledge that we provide and the skills, um, people people are able to use the gifts. For example, we have seen different people there. Uh, the person who, uh, who was making the, uh, the bricks, the person who was uh, the local engineer that we have seen, all of those are the gifts that God created. But if a person is well uh, trained, is aware of the knowledge that he or she has got, will be able to utilize the knowledge that they have, they have got. And also we can say that through the, the knowledge that we provide, uh, we want people to be good at, uh, they have food, enough food. So we provide the knowledge on agricultural skills because we know that if the person who have those skills will be able to, to use the techniques that he or she has got to do well in agriculture. But also as Christian has said, entrepreneurship skills, People will be able to be uh, will be able to use the knowledge to be economically free. So we we we, we apart from giving God, we also give the knowledge and the skills, as we know that knowledge is everything. If a person have the knowledge, will be will be able to use that knowledge to 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 utilize it everywhere. Will be morally good. Will use the values that God has has given him or her will be able to use the uh, the skills that he has got to 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 depend on him or herself rather than depending on other people because he he's free uh, in um, in his mind. That's all I can add. Thank you, Pando. I've got a question for you. So you've been, um, Pando's yeah. been working with us for a few months. Um, and sorry, my computer is turning on something 
totally different. Um, <laughs> Upendo, um, in the trainings that you've done, now that you've done several of them and have met with several of the people that we serve, um, what are some of the topics um, that people ask you for more information on or seem to be the most interested in learning more about? Um, okay, um, most of the, the, the topics that the people are more interested with, uh, they would love to know about health because uh, when, the, the, when the person is, is pro and healthy, it's very hard to do the stuff, anything, uh, the work at uh, the farm or any other work, he or she cannot do that. But okay. also, uh, people are interested to, to learn on entrepreneurship. As you can see, um, through those skills, people will be able to, uh, to depend on themselves. Because when, when you teach a person on something concerning um, being economically free, will be able to utilize that skill uh, for him to be to, 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 to be creative and find a way to use that knowledge so that he can do something um, to provide for he uh, for his or her family. So those kind of uh, topics are more people are more interested with. Um, another thing is I've come with a group of people who were asking on on family issues, family planning issues. Um, why they, they need that topic? It's because um, when the person is um, having a, a, a large number of people in the, in the family, um, it's very hard for him or her to provide if he is poor. So if they get that, um, uh, the, the, the education on health issues, especially in, in family planning, it will be able to help that person to how to, to, to control the family. Yeah. So those are just some of the, of the topics. Thank yeah. you. And, and with regards to entrepreneurship in a situation like right now where Tanzania, a large part of the economy comes from tourists and- Sorry, sorry, Carrie, sorry, Carrie. I was sorry. in addition to that, um, Go ahead. I forgot one thing. Um, agriculture, agriculture. They also they are also interested on agricultural issue because this is the backbone of most of the rural people. Because they depend much on interested. In, yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right now, with um, with tourists, not most tourists are not coming because a lot of the countries are dealing with COVID issues. Um, yes. That's significantly impacted the economy in Tanzania, not just people in the tourism industry, but the people that the people in the tourism industry buy things from or own businesses, or it, it just has a trickle down effect. And so even more important, um, and as businesses are closing in Tanzania, just like they are here um, related to COVID issues, but, um, even more important for people to have entrepreneurship skills so that they are running their own business and not relying on, they're able to use their own skills mm -hmm. to provide income instead of um, relying yes. on the tourism industry, which could go away at some point. Um, but to have a skill yeah. like making bricks where people will are always gonna be building houses or um, mm -hmm. Julian's wife, Christina, who makes donuts, people are, eating breakfast every day. Um, so a skill and a thing that, that's never gonna go away and be dependent on something else is a great skill for them to have. That's awesome. Um, we have just a couple minutes left, so I just wanna open it up and see if any um, anyone has any questions that you wanna ask the Tanzania team. So you can unmute yourself if you have a question that you wanna ask. And I'm gonna switch us back to gallery view on my screen so I can see everybody. How about um, Harriet? 
and Harriet's friend on Harriet's phone. <laughs> That's not Harriet. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself to us, please? You have to unmute the you have to unmute first. Let me see. Can you unmute your phone? Hi to everyone. Okay, this you, is Yusuf. I think I'm not new. And Yusuf, what, can, what okay, are you doing? Yusuf. What are you doing with Food for His Children right now? Okay, I I have I'm still working with the database with database, and yesterday I was collecting the list of children, the list of all children that. With, with children supports them and he, it's it is totally completed i have submitted to to samson so samson will give you that 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 detail okay do you remember how many children yes it is 770 and, and, and 36 children 700 that's uh, that are, those are children that Hmm? What age? Those are children below 18. Okay. Are uh, all children below 18. Okay. And so Yusufu yeah. is, bye Joy. Yusufu is um, a volunteer with Wood for His Children and he's getting his degree in ICT, Information and Communication Technology. Was that right? Yusuf, is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Okay, great. So thank you for volunteering yeah, with Food for His Children. All right, everyone, it is 7.57. Um, thank you all for coming. It was great to see you. Christian has a great plan for us for December. If you're able to join us in December, we're going to switch to a Saturday for December in hopes that um, we can be able to have some people who can't attend on a weekday. Hi, Nick. Um, so we will switch to a Saturday. Christian has some kids lined up. They're going to just bless the socks off of you. Um, and we're going to learn a little bit of what Christmas in Tanzania is like in December. So it will be the, I think it's the second Saturday in December. You can go to our website. I will switch the registration um, probably later today on the website. And then it will be in emails that go out as well with information as to the date and time. We're going to do um, 8 a.m. so that it's not 7 a.m. in the morning, but we can't go too late in the day for Americans um, because then it's too dark in Tanzania and you wouldn't be able to, our team wouldn't be able to safely be out and about in the villages. Um, so unfortunately, we still need to do early in the morning and then we have that darn time change. So, um, <laughs> so we can't go even earlier. But it was really good to see you all. Thank you so much, um, each and every one of you for loving and praying for and for supporting Food for His Children for all of these years because you have made all of this possible. You are not just providing um, support for encouraging, equipping, and helping all of these families in Tanzania. Um, we have 188 new families plus the 250 plus families that we had previously. So not just all of those families, but you are also empowering and equipping and helping all of our team members. Um, we have 16 employees in Tanzania. So you are helping them to be all that God created them to be as well. And their children and their children's children and beyond that. So thank you for everything that you do for Food for His Children. We love you and we just thank you for all that you do. Have an awesome and amazing weekend, everybody. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. That's right. a blessing in itself. Thank you, Joel. Yep. Right. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.